Good morning and a very warm welcome to the St Mary's and St Mark's All Age Service. Today we are continuing our sermon series looking at God's golden thread in the Bible. It's also the second Sunday of Advent, so as Abigail lights the Advent candle, let's pray. O Lord, rise up, we pray, your power and come among us, and with great might comfort us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us, your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom may to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law. 
and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through a prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Good morning, everyone. Happy Advent. Let's pray together as um, we look at God's word this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for being with us as we gather. Thank you for Advent that we're drawing closer to Christmas and I pray that you will raise new levels of hope in our hearts as we look at your word together. Amen. I wonder whether there are times when you have wished that you weren't alone. If you're still at school, there may be a number of times where you think, oh, just do with my best friend right next to me right now. And certainly I can look back to times where, well, I remember, for instance, being outside the head study waiting around thinking, this is pretty tough. And uh, other times when a friendship had, got, had gone badly wrong and I had to face that person and try and sort it out, and that was pretty tough. But since then, it may be that there are other things that immediately come to mind. It may be that when you broke up with someone and were feeling hurt and rejected, you just wanted someone with you. Or even in the last six months, you've had to go to a clinic for test results or something like that, uh, some medical thing, and, and you've found it really hard to be on your own. And actually, sometimes, even or perhaps especially in a public place, you may have felt extra lonely if the impression that you had as you looked round was that everybody else seemed to be in couples or families or with a friend laughing together. And that's really hard. But if you've ever experienced any of the above or any sense of being on your own, then today's lovely, amazing promise is for you, which is Emmanuel. God with us. So if you are still at school, and some situations, I've no doubt they are, are stressful, then you need to remember that promise all the time. God is with you in every classroom, every corridor, even the loo, certainly the playground, everywhere. You can have God right next to you. When I was at school, I remember consciously sort of clenching my hand down next to my right-hand side, as if I was grabbing God's hand when I needed to remind myself that I was not on my own, but that he was with me. Nowadays, I'd probably reach for a worship song, or I might remember one of God's wonderful promises, like Jesus saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But let's track back to why we can all have confidence that God is with us. Last week, uh, Carl began this uh, series called The Golden Thread, which was reminding us that there is a golden thread of the prophecies in the Old Testament that have been fulfilled by Jesus being born. And this week's prophecy is from Isaiah. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. God with us. It's such a well-known Christmas verse that it might well flow over us. But let's listen to it again. Hold on, what? And what, I wonder, did Isaiah make of the word that God gave him? God, you often amaze me, but this time, did you just say that a virgin would conceive and give birth? I mean, you're God and you can do anything, so I guess if you say so, right then? 
let's just pause and ask why God would choose to do this. God isn't a showman. So this isn't a case of, ta-da, you've never seen a virgin produce a baby before, but I can do it. Nope, it's not a cheap trick. No, he was bringing into the world a baby who was fully God and fully human. Since the fall at the start of time, when humankind chose to rebel against God, God's heart has been grieving over the fallout. There are wars, oppression, slavery, abuse, grief of all sorts, famine, loneliness, rejection, illness. The list goes on, doesn't it? And we have all in our different ways experienced some of it, I'm sure. Now, in the Old Testament, God raised up some amazing leaders. Some were kings, some prophets, who were all part of his plan for rescuing his people. But every one of them was just human. Even when they were good people, they just, they were still human and had their faults. And many of them were not good people. To an extent, of course, there must have been a comfort in having them alongside. When the people of God were in a tight spot, they will have said, well, at least we've got David with us, at least we've got Solomon with us, at least... But the fact is, those great men weren't perfect, and they weren't going to live forever, and none of them could be a saviour. What's needed is not just an amazing human leader with us, but God with us. God who is perfect. God who is eternal. God who can be alongside each one of us, in the realities of our gritty human life and bring down heaven's resources so that in him we can live it without sin. God who is the saviour of the whole world and also of any individual who says yes to him. So the baby to be born can't just be a human baby, even if that baby were born to two people who were in the happiest marriage you can ever imagine and who were as close to being without fault as possible. This baby is God's own son and must be born of a girl who has never given herself to anyone except God. But for that to happen, there's got to be a lot of obedience and there are a lot of yeses in this story. We can picture the scene, I know, of Gabriel visiting Mary and uh, when she was just a young girl, as we know, and telling her that God has chosen her for a huge but really hard blessing. You're engaged, Mary, but before you get married, you're going to get pregnant with God's own child. As well as the shock, Mary will have known at once what that might mean. Joseph could abandon her. In fact, by law, he should have had her stoned. And certainly, even if Joseph for some reason stands by her, the disgrace may well mean that her her own family might reject her. But she said, yes. And now in today's story, God comes to Joseph in a dream. That poor man must have been in agonies. I wonder what he was thinking when he lay down to sleep and um, when he was lying in bed that night before he went to sleep. Don't you think he was thinking, I would not have believed that Mary, of all girls, would get herself pregnant before our wedding. I mean, some, yeah, but not Mary. I know I haven't slept with her, so who has? She says she hasn't slept with anyone, but the evidence points the other way, doesn't it? God, you know that what I ought to do is have her stoned and publicly disgraced. But that sounds really harsh, and I don't know what to do. Please, will you guide me? And sure enough, wonderfully, God comes to him during the night with the clear guidance that he's asking for. Joseph, don't be afraid to keep Mary by your side. She hasn't betrayed you. The Holy Spirit 
has given her this baby. It's a son, and you are to call him Jesus, meaning the Lord saves. And Joseph, who knew God, and no doubt knew God's word, may have found that this very promise, this very prophecy that we're looking at today, pinged into his mind. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oh, so is that happening now to my fiancé, to me? And does God want me to obey this word? The answer again is yes. Now, I wonder if you ever worry that if God ever asked you to do a really huge, really hard thing, you'd flunk it. Maybe you don't really trust that when it came to it, you'd have the courage to follow through. Or maybe you're the opposite, and you think that though you don't necessarily obey God in all the little details of everyday life, if God asked you to do something really dramatic, you'd definitely be up for it. Oh, yes. Well, in both these scenarios, I reckon God knows us better than we know ourselves. And the key is those yeses. If you are saying yes to God in a mass of little obediences every day, many times a day, then your whole nature is being changed so that yes is your first reaction to God. The Spirit of God is growing in you so that you welcome God's presence with you in every situation. And what a difference knowing God, that God is with you, makes in every situation. If God is with you in a worrying situation, then you are reassured he has the power and he will undertake for you. If you're feeling alone, then remind yourself that God is with you, so you're not truly and deeply alone. Listen out for his voice of love and comfort. But also, if God is with you, then there are some things that you won't do. You know that such and such a situation would not be a place where God would feel comfortable, or such and such a choice is not right with God, and therefore you won't take God with you into that situation. Hopefully you won't step into it at all. Can I suggest that everyone listening to this, child, teenager, adult, does a little exercise of the imagination, perhaps later today or sometime this week, the sooner the better, really. Picture to yourself the hardest thing that you think may probably come up in the next week. Use your imagination to to be in that space and sort of dwell with why it might be hard. And then invite Jesus to come into that situation with you as Emmanuel. God with you there, then. What difference does he make? He cannot be in that situation without making a difference. Thank him for his presence with you in that hard place. And say yes to any nudge that you might get from the Spirit about how to handle it. And then secondly, imagine, if you would, the best thing that might happen this week. Your favourite bit of the week coming up. And invite Jesus into that too. Thank him about everything about it that's going to give you joy. God with you by the fire on a walk with a special loved someone and say yes again to Jesus' presence 
enjoying him consciously in that situation. Here's the golden thread. God promised a baby through a virgin and hundreds of years later, he fulfilled that promise. He's Emmanuel, God with us. Let's say yes to his presence in every situation of our lives. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be Emmanuel, God with us. We say a big grateful yes to your being in our lives in every situation. Would you please work in us so we say yes to you all the time? So that as Christmas gets closer to us, we get closer to you. Amen. What hope we hold this starlit night? The King is born in Bethlehem. Our journey long we seek. God of hope who brought love into the world, be the love that dwells between us. God of hope who brought peace into the world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope who brings joy into the world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock we stand on, be the centre, the focus of our lives always, and especially at this Advent time. Help us to give your hope to others. Amen. Just a couple of things by way of notice before we hand back to uh, the children for our blessing this morning. Uh, the first to say that next Sunday we're going to be having our nine o'clock service at St. Mark's uh, and our online 1030 communion service uh, here on YouTube. If you'd like to attend the service at St. Mark's, then please do uh, let us know.
Also, this coming Tuesday is our United Gathering prayer meeting. Uh, that's going to be at 7.45 p.m. at St. Mary's Church in Sapham. Uh, so if you'd like to join us uh, for that, you'd be very welcome to do so. Uh, so that's this Tuesday, 7.45 p.m. at St. Mary's. If you could let us know if you plan to come, we would really appreciate that. Also, we are beginning to put together our plans for our Christmas services. On Sunday the 20th of December at 3 p.m., we're going to be having an outdoor carol service on the recreation ground in Hand Cross. Uh, we would very much like some help for that service in terms of setting up and also having some people uh, as stewards on, on the various gates in the recreation ground to sign people in. Uh, so if you uh, are around on that day and would be willing to help, we'd love to hear from you. If you just email slapham at btinternet.com, that would be great. Uh, and also, if you just want to come to that event, you'd be very welcome. Uh, details of the other Christmas services will be coming out in the notice sheet, uh, so do keep an eye out for that. If you're not currently signed up to receive our notice sheet and would like to be, then if you email that address again, so slapham at btinternet.com, and we'll keep you as up to date as we can about the other services as we find out more. But for now, let's hand over to our children for the final blessing. We hope you enjoyed and were blessed by this service. Let's pray. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.